Um, tonight's program is the first in our Phenomena Exploring the Extraordinary series. The series is the flyer. We have them on the table in the back. Um, if you'd like to take one with you, the series will feature monthly lectures both here at the main library. Um, we hope you'll be able to join us for future programs in the series. Um, today's lecture is titled Transforming Your Planet Through Energy and Consciousness. Please welcome Rudy Feidner. Um, probably don't really need this today, but um, having this film, so hopefully, is my voice coming through okay? Can you hear me through the speakers? Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Rudy Bodner. I am a Reiki 2 level practitioner. Um, for those who are not familiar with Reiki, it's, it's a healing energy um, modality. And also, I'm a uh, ordained minister. Uh, I've been researching metaphysical topics of all sorts for about 15 years. And I've come to realize that there are some amazing things that are happening. And that's why I'm coming out here and kind of spreading the word and um, letting people know what's really going on out there. Because you don't hear about the stuff in the mainstream media. They're just not going to be talking about this stuff. But there seems to be a lot of connections between our consciousness and um, our physical reality, and that our consciousness can, in fact, change our physical reality. And that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And my topic: transforming our planet through energy and consciousness. <clears throat> what I want to start off with is um, an example of how an individual person can actually change their physical reality. Um, this guy, Ben Hoff from Holland, he was on a show uh, on Discovery. Um, it was called Superhuman. And he has the ability to increase his body temperature simply by thinking about it. And this guy holds about nine Guinness Book World Records. Um, one of them you can see up here, he's in a bad device up to his neck. And I think that he has since broken that record. That was an hour and 13 minutes in ice. Um, I think he's done an hour and a half. He was um, attempting to climb Mount Everest in sandals and shorts. And got up to about 24,000 feet up the mountain. Uh, Mount Everest is like 29,000 feet, so he, was, he almost got all the way up there. Um, at 22,000 feet, he was forced to put boots on. And the only reason he had to put it on the boots because you need spikes on, on your feet from the climb upwards and uh, you can't put them on sandals. So he, he was forced to put boots on at that point, but he was just wearing sandals and shorts. Um, so uh, the reason I'm bringing him up is because there are examples and they are documented where people are able to change things and scientists cannot figure out how this is done. Um, another thing that he was able to do was, which where they were showing in the, in the uh, show on Discovery, was he ran half a marathon, which is about 13 miles, above the Arctic Circle, where the temperature is about uh, minus 5 to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And he ran it barefoot, in shorts. And he did have to stop a couple of times. They were looking at his toes. Um, he was having a little bit of problem with frostbite. The doctors thought that he was going to end up losing those toes. Um, he did end up finishing the race. They looked really bad, a few of his toes after the race, and the doctor said, you know, those are going to have to be amputated. Uh, like, because you're not getting any blood circulation through those toes. So he goes, well, I'm going to work on that. Well, he got circulation going through his toes, and he didn't lose them. And the doctors, they can't figure it out, because they thought for sure that he was going to lose those toes. Right. Um, so this is just a, an example of how we ourselves can change our physical reality with just our, our minds. There are other examples of, and people here may have heard of things like um, people are able to lower their heart rate. Um, and Tibetan monks who are able to go out in 40 degree weather with no shirts on, and they put uh, wet sheets on their backs and they dry them. And they actually hooked them up to machines and found that their fingers and their toes, they could raise their body temperature by 17 degrees. They can't explain how they do it. But apparently, they're doing it. So there's something 
that's going on between here and our physical reality. <clears throat> Next thing that I want to uh, bring up in the presentation is this guy here, Dr. Masaru Emoto. He was uh, featured in a, a movie called What the Bleak, if anybody here has seen that movie. Um, that movie came out in 2004. He wrote this book, Hidden Messages in the Water, that came out in 2001. In Japanese, was translated to English in 2004. Um, <clears throat> but what he was doing was, he wanted to see if there was an effect of uh, words, like if words had negative and positive influences on water. And not only words, but also images, uh, music, um, also uh, different types of radiation, like he would put in there, cell phone, microwave oven, things like that, to see if it affected the water. And what he does is he takes distilled water and he puts words on the water, whether they be like a negative or positive connotation, and he has the words facing inwards towards the water for 24 hours. And he always uses distilled water. He uses um, you know, no other kind of water unless it's coming from a source that they want to see you know, what the crystal structure is. But when he does these um, uh, experiments with words and pictures and sound, he always uses distilled water, which means there's nothing in the water. It's just pure water. There's no minerals, nothing in there. And he takes the water, he has the word put on the bottle, it sits there for 24 hours, and then he takes that water and he puts it on about 50 different petri dishes and he freezes it. Then the crystals will form. He takes the crystals out into a lab where it's still about minus five degrees, puts it on what they call a dark field microscope, and takes a picture of it at 200 times magnification. And what I'm going to go through is some of the uh, examples, um, actually, that come straight out of this book of uh, what he was doing. This one is a picture of the crystal that formed out of the words love and gratitude that were on the bottom. Uh, what I want to point out when we see some of the other images is that there is a geometry here, there's a symmetry here, there's a structure and there's an order to it. And this comes from what we would all consider a positive connotation of the words. And it's simply just the crystals that came off when he put those words on the bottom. Next one, the words thank you were put on the bottle. And um, what he was doing too is he was doing this in all different kinds of languages. Obviously, he's Japanese, so most of what he was doing was in Japanese. But he would put um, these words like in French or English, um, German, different, different words. But the connotation, like there's an energy that's associated with the word. And somehow it shows up in the image. Again, with the, the word thank you, we see a beautiful image, it looks like a snowflake, we see a geometry, we see structure, and we see order in the picture. And I'm going to show you now one that's uh, a negative connotation, where he had the word you fool written on the bottle of water. And what's interesting is because, you know, he's done these experiments over and over and over and over again, um, it's interesting to point out that words that seem to have a negative connotation, and this is the same water, don't seem to have any crystal formation. There's, it's chaotic in there. There's no structure. There's no geometry. There's, there's nothing. It's just chaos. And this, you know, his thinking is that it has to do with the energy and the vibration of the words that are put on the bottom. 